In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a new feature in PowerShell Universal v3, which is SQL Server support. So up until now, uh, PowerShell Universal used a single file database called LightDB to store all job information, app tokens, and identities locally on the PowerShell Universal system. But now you can configure PowerShell Universal to actually communicate with and store data inside a local or remote SQL server. Um, not only does this allow you to kind of back up that SQL server and that kind of thing, um, have high availability of that SQL server, but you can also scale out your PowerShell Universal instances. So we're just going to kind of look at how to configure that um, right now. So right now I am running uh, PowerShell Universal um, on port 5000. And you can see that I'm just sitting on the login page here. If I log in, it's going to look you know just like any other PowerShell Universal instance. Um, I have a single... Uh, test script here and all that is doing is just calling get process so get process kind of outputs a bunch of data so it's kind of good for um, showing off persistence like sql server support so if we click jobs you can see that i've run a couple jobs here and it you know looks just like it is uh, when storing in lightdb where we have output on the left hand side and pipeline output um, on the right hand side so what's cool about this is if we actually pop over into uh, SQL Management Studio, you can see that this data is now stored in these SQL tables. So I've actually run uh, a select on this job table, and it's pretty much the data that we're seeing inside PowerShell Universal's uh, job um, table here. So um, in order to actually stand up another PowerShell Universal instance that communicates with this, uh, this database, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new app settings JSON file, which I've actually already done, um, and then put it on a different port. So I have my original app settings JSON file, which it has the port set to 5000, and that's the um, PowerShell Universal instance that you know we're kind of navigating right now, and it's also the one that's running in VS Code right here. And you can see that the connection string is set to my local DB. I've created this database PSU v3, and I've set a plug. There, I've changed the plugin from uh, the LightDB plugin to the SQL plugin. So all this stuff you can actually do through the MSI installer, so you don't have to like mess with these app setting JSON files manually yourself. Uh, but I'm just kind of showing you where it ends up um, once you run the MSI. Um, the other app settings JSON file is going to look almost identical, except that I'm changing the port that this uh, particular PowerShell Universal instance is running on. So this is going to listen on port um, 5002. Um, it's just running on the same machine. This could be a different machine. Obviously, you'd probably scale out onto other machines. But this is just running on the same machine, uh, listening on port 5002. It also has the connection string set to the local DB. So this could be your remote database. And I've set the um, plugin to SQL. Now, if I come over to a uh, command line um, prompt here, I'm actually going to start PowerShell Universal with the app settings uh, command line option. It allows you to specify an app settings file that's not in the default location. So I have this one just kind of on my desktop. And I'm going to run that. And you can see it finds the app settings JSON file. And now it is listening on port um, 5002. So if we actually go back to our uh, web browser here, we can now navigate to our new PowerShell Universal instance. So um, we have two running on this machine. We have one on port 5000 and one running on port 5002. So if I go to admin and log in, you'll see that the same jobs are available here. Um, if I click automation, jobs, I have the same three jobs that I ran. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to run this job and I'm going to show you, you can see it's starting to output. Um, if we go to general diagnostics, we can actually view the job details. And we can see that this is the hang fire like backend that is used to run jobs. We have both our servers listed, duplicated right now. We're going to look into why that's happening in our beta version. But um, you can also see that our jobs are processing. And it's only processing on one of those servers. So now we're scaling out across these um, these multiple servers, um, it picked one of the servers to run this job on and it won't run on the other server. So that means I could have twice as many servers running jobs. So um, that job succeeded and it will actually list the server name that this particular job ran on. So you can see this is actually listing uh, Adam Desk 
and it's got an ID number. Um, if we actually go look to our servers, you can see there's two different uh, Atom desk ID numbers. If you had multiple servers, um, you would have those server names listed here. And we're gonna expose that information inside the PowerShell Universal Admin Console, so you'll be able to see which uh, servers your actual um, jobs are running on. So with the SQL Server support, we're now adding kind of high availability, um, both in terms of PowerShell Universal itself, as well as um, kind of the uh, persistence layer. So you can scale out your uh, SQL Server instances, and you can also scale out your PowerShell Universal instances and have multiple job runners running and storing data in a centralized or clustered SQL Server. So in this video, we went over some of the uh, functionality of the new SQL Server support in PowerShell Universal V3.